morning all thank you for joining me i'm doing this as a voiceover as i kind of film quite a lot of my paws and then i just choose which ones i think i can teach from and give a few tips so this paw i'm doing a floating cup technique so at the moment i'm just putting a flood coat on rather than just a white flood coat i've actually used a kind of a light sage green around the outside uh, and i've popped a little bit of white in the middle hoping that it will make my colors pop through nicely but the aim here, here is to show you how i stretch my cells it's a common misconception that more silicone creates more cells it doesn't in this piece there is only two minuscule drops of silicone in in two different colors so one drop in one color one drop in another color that is it um and I will show you kind of the technique of floating cup right at the beginning. And then I'll show you how I stretch the cells out. There's always a limit to how much stretching you can do to keep nice big cells, but then not misshape the, shell, the cells themselves. Oh, that's a tongue twister. Um, I'm sure you can imagine you don't want to break the, the shape of the cell on the outside. Otherwise, the cell will disperse into the painting. So I'm just popping a pillow of white there and that's just to pop my cup onto so I can do my floating cup technique. I like this one as it gives you a reasonable size cell to start off with and then it makes it easier for me to stretch it to a larger cell for the finished piece. I'll try not to ramble on as I watch the video with you. So there is no silicone whatsoever in any of the flood coats that I've got there. So the white and the sage green, that's no silicone in that. With my, um, it is my recipe with the paint, which many of you already know. So I take a plastic cup and then I cut a hole in the bottom so I can put the plastic cup face down onto that little pillow of white paint like so and then I've layered my paint two of the colors with silicone in and I'm just pouring it into the cup as you can see the cup on the canvas is moving itself which is what we want it to do hence it's called the floating cup technique the action of it of the cells pushing through that pillow of white paint creates a lovely effect. So I'm trying to encourage it to move slightly more. Just gives me a basis of more cells I can then stretch and decide how to work with them. So I slide my cup off, hoping that I can drag some white over the top of that section. Just gives a better finish. And similar cells as you drag off the cup. So with a the torch there, I'm using not the brightest blue part of the flame, the slightly lighter blue part of the flame of the blowtorch is actually touching the paint. It needs that real heat to push those cells to come through. And as you can see, there's plenty of them there, despite the fact we've only used a tiny, tiny bit of silicone. I don't have a huge contrast in my colours in this piece because I was going for a particular look that I'm working on. So it's time for stretching. So as you can see, I'm going what was my top right hand corner of the canvas when I was doing the piece. And they all look rather misshaped as it stretches, but it's OK. As you can see, I'll tilt the paint back to the centre and the shape of the cells returns to a beautiful shape. It's always returning that paint back. Unfortunately, you can't see quite as I tip this piece, but I tip it in the bottom right. And then I tip the paint back to the middle to return those cells to a nice shape. And then I'm topping, top, tipping to top left and then again returning the cells. And some of these cells are really, really huge. 
Um, this canvas is a good size canvas. I have to, sorry, I haven't got the measurements on, on me. Uh, but they're, you know, they're a couple of centimetres by a couple of centimetre cells. So now the paint's thinner on top of the that darker green. I'm just giving it another torch to see what cells pop through. Personally, I watching this video in hindsight, I think I should have left it at this stage. I think the cells are a really, really nice shape. And I actually really like that I've got some negative space at the bottom. However, as you will see, I decide I think I can go for another stretch. So as I stretch it all the way down, you can see how much those cells then miss shape. So the shape really, really narrows. And I return the paint back to where it was to try and gain that shape back. But as you can see, with some of the cells, it doesn't quite revert. The shape is a little bit misshaped from that nice kind of circular line around the outside. So I potentially think I shouldn't have done that last little stretch. I'm not keen on these cells right, as you're watching the video, right at the bottom. Um, they really are a different sort of shape as to what I was going for. Um, however, it looks beautiful. Um, so yeah, that was that was it. Um, hopefully that helps with your stretching. Give it a go. Um, and I'll try and do some more little tips for you. Thank you very much. Bye.